All coolants are comprised of water, an antifreeze mixture, typically a glycol mix, and additives and dyes. Penray is a supplier of inhibitor packages to the different antifreeze blenders. Most manufacturers are using products provided by Penray. Coolant is there to remove the heat of combustion. It also is necessary to prevent corrosion between the different surfaces and the water in them. Uh, obviously scale prevention would be necessary, cavitation or pitting prevention, and freeze and boil over protection. Cavitation or liner pitting is a problem typically of larger engines. This is where air bubbles form inside the cooling system as they burst against the metal surfaces will actually erode the surfaces away. Size engines, the bigger area of concern for cavitation is the EGR coolers. And because of the great differential in temperature here, the chances that bubbles will form in these components is very high, and we do need this protection of cavitation erosion. Three types of coolants could be used in a school bus size vehicle conventional or automotive type coolants, fully formulated, and ELC or organic acid coolants. However, you should never be using a coolant containing soluble oil. I high silicate or automotive type antifree should never be used in the diesel engines that we're using. Chromate, methoxypropylene, methyl alcohol, anything with sealant additives should never be used. HVAC, HVAC coolants or water with a total hardness above 170 parts per million. Automotive or conventional coolants could be used in a gas engine, uh, say in our Minotaur product. The corrosion protection in these is phosphate, nitrate, or silicate based. Conventional coolings, however, were not designed to be used in mid-range diesel engines. Their concentration of silicate based inhibitors were designed because of the aluminum content in these gas engines uh, that is not acceptable in the diesel engines of the same size. The initial fill must be precharged with SCAs and every 15 to 20,000 miles or 500 hours we must check the freeze point and SCA depletion using test strips. We would add SCA as necessary which could be added either through a liquid or through a service filter but this was not designed to be a long-life coolant and drain flush and fill is an annual basis with conventional coolants. Fully formulated coolants, again the same concentration of water, freeze protection and additive, uh, but this is a phosphate free system. Uh, very low total dissolved solids are necessary and they must meet the Truck Maintenance Council RP329 and or the ASTM D6210 specifications. Common names we'd see are Fleet Charge, Alliance, or Prestone HD. Color may depend on the manufacturer or OEM specs, but most of these are a purple coolant, sometimes a light pink. The nice part of this coolant, is this is, could be good for the life of the engine if you properly maintain it with the proper SCA supplements. The current coolant used in the Thomas product is identified only by its color and the fact that it's an HD antifreeze coolant with SCAs. Maintenance on this coolant, again initially it is precharged with SCA so no additional SCAs are necessary. If every 15 to 20,000 miles or 500 hours we would check freeze protection point and SCA using test strips. We'd ask, add SCAs as the test strips direction and the SCAs can also be added with a liquid or a filter uh, service system. ELC coolants are acid-based coolants. These coolants were designed for, were designed for the heavy-duty trucking industry, long mileage vehicles. They are usually red or an orange color. 
and common names could be any of the following list. This has to be checked for freeze protection as necessary in case there has been coolant loss. But more importantly, it must be checked for contamination. Uh, contamination here could be as simple as tap water. These coolants cannot tolerate the hardness of tap water. They use a deionized distilled water base. If the coolant is good, it may be extended at 300,000 miles for an additional 300,000 miles. The problem with this coolant is not only the hours, but the time, because these coolants are typically only good for three to six years. We can add nothing to them except extended life coolant or distilled water, and if it becomes contaminated more than 15%, we must either flush it, replace it, or change it over to a, a conventional coolant system. The test strips we use for any of these coolants uh, are, an example is shown here. This is Penray's test strips. The first two squares on it would indicate the freeze protection and SCA level on a conventional coolant. On extended life coolant, however, the only strip that works is the third and that only shows a contamination situation which would require that you change the coolant. Check for freeze protection with extended life coolant, you must use a refractometer, which is a very, very accurate tool. Liquid SCA in conventional coolants could be added with a liquid. Uh, the Penray 3000, uh, if one takes one pint per four gallons on an initial fill or a 5% concentration, this would be added annually. Okay. This is for use with systems that are not using a service filter. The filter, if ordered from Thomas, from the factory would be the WF2077 Fleet Guard filter, which is a blank filter. Since the initial coolant is already precharged with SEA, we don't want to add any additional to it. The PIC2350-8425 filter, or the NF3000 Penray filter, is the service filter you should be using. This contains one pint of Penray and would again recharge the system for another 15,000 miles or one year. Another method of maintaining the system for conventional coolants was to use the need release filter. This, however, was designed for long mileage units upwards of 150,000 miles. It is, however, only good for 15 months, so the expense of it really does not justify the use in a school bus situation. It works by dissolving membranes between pucks that are within the cartridge. As conventional coolant wears down, the SCA is way out, it tends to become more acidic, and this is the action that's used to recharge the system automatically. Converting from ELC to fully formulated. Well, if we happen to have ordered it with ELC and you don't want to use it, it's a simple process of draining the system out, flushing it slightly, and then refilling this with conventional coolant and SCAs recommended by the manufacturer. Another problem you might have with ELC, if you're on the road, you must recharge this with proper coolant. Uh, you cannot use conventional coolant to, re, to, to refill an ELC system without totally contaminating it. But other brands are usually very compatible with the ELC, and you could use those other products without diminishing the performance of your product. Another source of very good information is Penray's website. They have a tremendous system of guides on there to assist you in whatever you need to maintain your cooling system properly.